Hello everyone on YouTube and welcome to the 10th part tutorial of how to model a basketball court arena. So uh, from this part what I want to do is uh, start modeling the um, basketball hoop. Basically I think it's named as uh, backstop, um, whatever, backstop. And um, what happened is that for several days I tried to find a good reference picture is also blueprints for this because uh, I truly wanted to create something that uh, really represent the real thing and I wasn't satisfied with creating you know something that is just looks similar and that's uh, that's it so I kept uh, searching the web and continuing my research <laughs> uh, to find the real exact model so basically uh, I'm gonna say that uh, the real one is uh, a basketball hoop that named as uh, Arena, okay? Arena ba Backstop. And it's belonged to Spaldings, and um, you can find this in their website, although I thought that it's not there. Uh, they actually do have uh, some page that, um, you know, it's for this product. Now, the thing is that there wasn't any good reference pictures, there were, but they did uh, serve uh, PDF files. Uh, some of them is part of their catalog, and some of them are specially for this product. And that include... Um, some blueprints, I mean partial blueprints about uh, sizes and um, any, you know, any uh, parameters that uh, can serve you some uh, sense of how, how big this is and what's the scale. So uh, continuing my search today, I found uh, finally something that uh, I think sums it up and that way I can uh, actually start and model this and <coughs> you know get something that look re really uh, similar to the real thing basically <coughs> so what I'm trying to say is that if you go to my uh, Facebook uh, to my YouTube channel uh, banner here you can find uh, here this uh, little icon of the Facebook this is the Facebook fan page link so it will uh, bring you here, and basically what I'm wh what I was starting to do every time that I'm using any pictures or any textures that I pulled from, uh, basically I'm trying not to use uh, you know others uh, things, but as long that it's only for education purpose, that's all good. <coughs> so what you need to do is basically come here and look for the Spaulding's backstop. Uh, uh, album, okay, and in there you will have good reference pictures to uh, work with along this tutorial. Basically, I will base most of the tutorial from now on uh, using uh, this uh, reference pictures and also some of uh, the scales parameters that I have on those PDF files. Now, <coughs> this is more of like continuing the basketball court arena, but I do want to um, focus those, um, you know, the parts from now on only for this thing, okay? So, therefore, we will create a new scene file and we will start working this as it was a, a real scale world uh, model, okay? And I don't know why we are seeing this, so let's close this. Also, uh, something nice about Steam, by the way, that I'm, you know, I'm gaming all day, so um, what happened is that Steam you can add uh, software inside, so there is an add a non-Steam game. So I was trying to work with it, just to see that it's working. So now every time that I'm opening Maya through here, <coughs> people see that I'm working on Maya. Um, this is funny. It's nice. I mean, there's no arm on this. Uh, it's all good. And also I have this Steam layout, so I mean I can simply go on to Steam through Maya, and this is very cool. Um, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, leave this <laughs> and yeah, let's create a new file. So we have already a new file scene. Um, as usual, I want to go over shading, wireframe, smooth wireframe and create the polygon primitive is already unchecked interactive creation. So we can start off now. 
we will begin from using the PDF file. So I will open the PDF file that I'm using, that I'm going to use, so you can see what, what I'm talking about. And also I will provide some more information about what I'm doing because um, many people here that are watching this tutorial are from all around the world. And mm, this brings me into this uh, problem we have uh, using uh, different scales parameters. I mean, um, most of the U.S. residents uh, using inches and foot and parameters uh, like this. And, <clears throat> uh, well, we are, I'm at, uh, never mind, just other regions just use centimeters and so on. And what's happening is that I basically always use centimeters because I set Maya to centimeters. And now that I need to work with this PDF, this PDF is only giving me, um, you know, um, scales that uh, introduced me by inches. So, um, as you can see, the backboard of this, okay, it's uh, 4272. Now, I want you to be aware, we are going to, like, uh, modeling the arena version. And this is not the arena version. It's something look-alike like the arena version. But you ne really need to be aware that the arena version is something else than this. I mean, it's just a little bit different, I think. Um, I will try to look for it here. In uh, Oh, browser is open. I'm, okay, let's see. Um, arena. Oops. Ar arena. Arena, um, <laughs> backstop, yeah, Spalding, okay, so this will lead me over here, Spalding equipment, equipment, Arena, backstop, and this is what they using on the NBA, okay, so for this, what you need to do is, when you click on this, you can download the, uh, the uh, PDF from here, the first one, okay, this is the 10, foot uh, version and here you will have this real um, this real thing okay so this is the same you see it's 401 401,819 so this is exactly the same file that I'm using here which is this okay and this is basically the same one that it's just opened here so <coughs> so th this is okay. I mean, uh, I, I, uh, for a second I thought it's something else. And yeah, I have a little bit of confusion here. You can see I have a lot of other th stuff here and it's just a mess. So we will start off by uh, translating some of the scales uh, from inches and foot to centimeters. So the 10 foot, okay, which is the 10 foot and it's represented as 10 foot, this one, when it's fully open basically when it's half open or, I don't know, a quarter open, it's <coughs> eight foot, okay? And there is also a nine foot. So basically it's just a measure of how much it's open and how much height it's give, it gives to the ring, to the rim. Ring, rim, same. So <coughs> we need to be aware of this. And basically what we need to do is take this 10 foot and translate it in, into centimeters, okay? So... Um, if you open uh, Google, okay, let's open Google, and if you type in something like uh, foot 2 cm, okay, you will get this uh, cool thing here, this converter here, okay, it's just appearing above the <coughs> all, all the search results, and basically this is like a gadget, you can use it uh, to convert any other things, uh, you know, temperature, mass, speed, volume, area, of fuel consumption, time, and digital storage. We're going to concentrate on length because this is what we do. Yes! My cat trying to translate to me something, I don't know. So, foot. Um, we need to translate 10 foot. So, I'll type in, type in 10 foot and make sure that this one is on centimeters. That means the height of the rim is 304.8. So, bearing this in mind and being aware that the grid for us is the um, zero, which is the ground uh, level, um, we're going to switch to side view. Okay, side view. This is the side view. Expand it. 
and we're going to use a measurement distance tool. Now, this tool is very gentle. You need to be aware what you do. You only need to click twice, and I will first bring it on. So, measure tool, distance tool, and your mouse cursor will turn into this. Now, I'm holding the X key <coughs> to spend uh, to s uh, snap to grid. Okay, I'm th I think it's working like that. And if I click here, it will snap exactly to the middle here. So that's good. This is what I want. Now, from here, what I want to do is just type in here. I mean, like clicking the second click over here, and still hold down the X key, so it will snap there. Now, with that done, I only created something, I mean, it just need to be above a little bit, okay? We will now um, give this a new fixed number. So right now it stands on 10 uh, units, okay? So basically it's like 10 centimeters. And we need to bring it to 304, okay? 304.8. So I won't bother you with this. I already... Uh, typed in here. Oh no, I need to change some things. Um, it's just a little bit different. So I need to bring this to 304. So what I will do is where it says translate to Y, you need to make sure that the channel box is open. So click here and select only this locator. Don't touch this one, only the locator, which is green here. And not even like that, okay? Only this part of the locator, the, the left side here because the right side is containing those, uh, I don't know, those dots here. So be aware that you need only choose the locator. If it's hard for you, you're going to go over Outliner, open it, and choose the locator 2, which is uh, the second one. Okay, this is the one. So just select it and go over Translate Y and type in this value, 304. Um, again, 304.8. Okay. Point eight, <coughs> and hit the enter. <coughs> so this is a good starting point because now you know what the height of your rim. Okay, now the height of your rim um, is good. Now we need the other uh, thing. So I'm gonna go back to my PDF, and now I need to um, understand why this is 96 and why this is 10. So for those who uh, not using inches by daily use, um, and more used to the centimeters. Uh, what what happens here is that the 90, if you can see here, the 10 has just a little thingy here, right? So that pre present foots, and when you have two of them here, those two little thingies, that represent um, inches. So we need to translate 96 inches into centimeters. So I'm going to go over back to the Google and type in here 96, yes, 96, change it to inches, where is inch? Now that means that I need to make a 204, uh, 243.84, okay? I'm going to copy this and instead of memorizing it. So this is the distance from the backboard to the main body that hold all this thing, okay? So I'm gonna go over uh, side view again, for view, and then side view, and I'm gonna click with the again the measure tool, distance tool. I'm gonna hold on the X and click exactly on the same spot where this is, okay? And then hold down the X again and click somewhere here. And we will do the same. We will adjust this second locator to be the same um, distance, okay? So I'm going to choose this locator. And again, you can use it the outliner here. And we're going to go over... I'm going to go over the side view, I think. Okay. You know what? Uh, yeah, the side view. And I'm going to push this a little bit. So you see the values here are changing. That means that translate Z, it's the one that I need to control right now. So I'm going to click here and control V to past the, those values, and this will be the distance from the rim here, from the backboard, the front side of the backboard, to the body. So now we know that here it's the body that holds all this uh, backstop, okay? So right now I'm going to go over File, Save, Scene, As, 
I already have other uh, things, but I will try to call it like back stop one. Okay, save as, and I just want to know that I won't touch those two. Okay, those two are really important for me right now. Now, I will grab all all of them at once. Okay, just like so making sure the locator is everything is contained and click here on this add to layer okay this will add them into layer and then you can you can double click and call it whatever you want i don't know measurement or whatever i am gonna spell it because i misspell it probably but let's choose a color click save and let's click here the second cube here that will lock uh, will lock this layer so you can't edit it okay so that's good now go over shading and wireframe on shaded um just applying it trying to see if it will show up as uh blue it's not so i will go back to perspective view and that's all good at least i i see this okay now uh, if the rim is here, it basically should be here, almost at the same spot where the backboard is. So from here, uh, what I will do, I will create a cube, very easily, cube like so. And I want to mention something very weird that I, I came by, like when I try when I tried to do this at the first time. Um, remember each um, each object that you create there is a construction history applied to this. I mean, some history applied to this um, shape. Now, <coughs> if I will go and simply scale it up a little bit, okay, you can see the values here are changing according to this thing. <coughs> okay, now that's all good. Let me just pause this a second open the door for the cat she is whining and whatever anyway uh, as I said I was killing it a little bit manually and those values here has been changed now I have a point here so please be uh, focused on this um, as we mentioned the uh, backboard size is it should be 42 on uh, 72 42 inches on top of 72 inches so this is the real measurement for this, I mean in centimeters. The backboard height is 106.68 and the length is, okay, um, 182.88. With that thing, what I want to do is basically, if you click here under the inputs head title, you have the history, which create. this is the first history that attached immediately when you create some shape. So. Here, you can type in width, height, and the path, right? So, if I choose to apply height right now, after I modify this by scaling it a little bit, these values will add it to these values, okay? And this is what wrong. So, I will show you. If, for instance, the height here should be, um, let's say, the backboard height is 106, I will copy this value over the height, Sorry, control V. Okay, this is what we will get. Um, okay. This is almost the same size as <laughs> our, uh, this one, this thingy here. You see? All this measure of the height of the ring. So this is a little bit problematic, as you see. All right. Uh, it can be 106. It's probably more. So... This is the one thing that I do want you to be aware of. Don't scale it, don't do anything. Use default settings when you apply when it's applied. So I'm going to undo whatever I did so it will bring it back to 1 on 1 on 1. Now the default settings are uh can be set like if it's default and you haven't touched it uh never, you can go over and sorry so you don't have what to uh, you you have no reason to do this but if you did change the default settings for those shapes here you're going to go over the cube at this and simply go over edit and reset settings okay so it's already the reset to the, uh, it's already the default settings so i it was just um quick uh explanation about this so 
With that done, when it's set to the default settings, now I can come in and set this to those 106.68 centimeters and click enter. And now you can see that it's way tinier, right? Okay, so I'll undo whatever I just moved. And now I will apply the, the other one. So the other one is the basically the length of this board and it's 182. I will copy this and this goes to the the path depth depth well, I, I don't know why I say the path and not depth anyway control V duplicate this and enter so now we have a nice thing but what's the problem is that this backboard right now is facing not the side view I mean if I will go over the side view uh, it actually it does this is the problem it's facing the side view I don't want to I don't want this to face the side view so I will change the rotation tool hold on the J and simply rotate it until I see it uh, from the side okay and then it, it's all good switch back to selection tool go over the width and here I will set it to something like 4 okay bring it up and now you see this here this line which represents the highest point which is 10 foot basically I want this to be exactly here okay at the l somewhere here at the lowest part of this backboard this is actually where the ring comes the rim ring and we need it to be here okay something like so I don't have the actual uh, height for this so this is the problem and this is why you need to uh, trust your own uh, you know uh, eyes with this anyway it still serve us already good because we know uh, most of the scale and it's not it won't be really out of proportions so, so that's all good now I'm gonna create another cube uh, and I don't want to touch it as I told you I don't want to modify it scale it or something I want to keep it as it is and now I will bring in back the PDF so where is the PDF I'm a little bit clueless with this the PDF is just annoying okay the PDF was uh, not this one right it's not this one we are relaying on the other PDF which is this one oh his mom went outside and now that she's outside he wants her here and because she's not here that's a problem he will keep whining and I can do really nothing about this just hope that he will be quiet so here this is the one that we are relaying on the 401 980 okay this is the one not the other one it's just look similar but it's not similar uh, it doesn't even look similar anyway um, here down here if we will zoom in we can see the bottom uh, this is the bottom view it's like uh, at first glance I thought this is the top view but then I understood very quickly that this is the bottom view and you can see all the mechanics that goes in here and everything and what we need to know is what the size, the overall size of this crate here. Carrot, crate, I don't know. Um, so this is 83 and I don't know how even to say this or either to type this in. So I'm going to relay on the, those numbers as, uh, you know, uh, rounded numbers. 72, 83 inches, that's all. And with that, basically, um, this is the overall uh, of this cra crate, carrot, carrot, I don't know. Together with the, um, there is those, uh, you know, uh, safety cushions like this, that, that, you know, if a player is, um, you know, running into this, so you won't get hurt from the metal. So those cushions are need to uh, be in, in mind, I mean. So together with them, it's 83. And also for, this is the, I mean like the length of this cartridge, crate, and this is the 
49 is for the width, okay? So 49 and a half inches and 83 whatever. So if we take this um, into these here, so that means that the 49, 49.5 inches this is 125.73 I just want to take a look on my uh, yeah so this is basically the same um, as my earlier so this is these are the values that we are gonna use and just checking this 83 and 210 yeah so it's just a little bit more I don't know but anyway uh, that's not too bad I mean this is a uh, this is okay. So we're gonna use those values in order to create this uh, base of the back backstop. I'm gonna um, <coughs> copy the width. Control C, bringing this and <coughs> here again I created a new cube. So for the history of it, I have this. And right now, what I want to do the 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 width. Okay, Control V to pass this and enter this okay it looks big but that's all good and then go to depth and copy this okay to depth <coughs> voila now I only need the height so I'm gonna bring in something like 50 for the height just for the start um, then I will go over to side view and place this over here Okay, so now it's starting to look, uh, starting to get, uh, at least we have the correct scale. I mean, those are the borders of this. Okay, so I will put this a little bit just floating above the ground because the reason for this is that it's going to set on wheels. Uh, here at the back there there is wheels and here at the front there are also wheels, but when it's uh, mounted to this uh, to the court, um, it should stand on two pins or something, you know, something like that. So I'm gonna put it just like that, a little bit above the floor. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, first part of the tutorial. I'm trying to still experiment some things, so I'm trying to go on the safe side here. So everything that I I've teach until now it's all good and we will continue uh, at the next part whenever I will feel confident about the next part okay so thank you for watching I'm gonna save this file and you do the, the same as well save scene as um, yeah backstop one is okay do you want to replace it yes okay so thank you for watching this tutorial and see you soon at the next part bye